If you only know New York City as the city that never sleeps, a place of towering skyscrapers, or as a popular tourist destination, then sadly, you don't know New York all that well. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Our topic today is on New York City, one of the most booming metropolitan areas on the East Coast, as well as one of the most affluent. Otherwise known as the Big Apple, this vast metropolis of 8.4 million people includes the boroughs of Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. Yes, there's big money here, and what better way for us to showcase New York's wealth than by zooming in on some of its big money neighborhoods. So without further delay, here are the 11 richest neighborhoods in New York City. Number 1. The Upper East Side. Since this happens to be New York's most popular rich neighborhood, we might as well just get it out of the way. The Upper East Side is a vast area encompassing a wide range of smaller neighborhoods. Officially, it's the area between East 60th Street through 96th Street, from the East River to 5th Avenue. To be fair, anyone who can claim to live on the Upper East Side will receive some form of applause. But what if you want that standing ovation? Well, when it comes to the big, big, big money, it's concentrated within these three avenues. Park Avenue, Madison Avenue, Fifth Avenue, and the streets in between. This is where you'll find the schmanciest of mansions and townhouses, the most prestigious of condominium buildings, fancy private schools, posh boutiques, old money, new money, and millionaire's row, which at some point doubles as museum mile. You'll also find buildings like 740 Park Avenue, towing the world's highest concentration of billionaires in one building, as well as the headquarters to some of the oldest and most private clubs in America. An average two-bedroom apartment on the Upper East Side, with the doorman and the works, will cost you around $2.5 million. While a townhouse will average around $15 million, with rents at $5,000 for a basic one-bedroom. Number 2. Tribeca. Short for, Triangle Below Canal Street, this busy urban center is considered the most expensive neighborhood in all of New York City. This is due to its prime waterfront location in Lower Manhattan, its high-ceiling converted warehouses that are now luxury residences, its close proximity to Wall Street, and a vibrant arts and cultural scene. Also known for its cobblestone streets, its charming townhouses, its ultra-modern luxury complexes, and trendy shopping, dining, and nightlife, one must realize, it's not just Tribeca. The entire Lower West Side consists of these same qualities. We're basically telling you that Tribeca's adjoining neighborhoods are nothing to sneeze at either, as they too can easily cost you a pretty penny. But for the sake of this video we'll stick to Tribeca. Home of the Tribeca Film Festival since 2002, the neighborhood now attracts celebrities in abundance, and it has become quite common to run into them on the street, at the local bookshop, or corner bakery. Tribeca is also home to 56 Leonard Street, the ultra-famous, ultra-modern, and ultra-pricey residential tower that looks more like a Jenga tower. A converted loft in Tribeca with all the fixings can easily cost you $15 million, while a newly constructed two-bedroom condo will go for $5 million. With rents, you can expect a typical one-bedroom apartment to rent for $14,000 a month. Number 3. Forest Hills Gardens. This historic Tudor sanctuary, in the center of bustling Forest Hills, used to be Queens' old money neighborhood. Of course, that was a while ago. Today, everyone lives in Forest Hills Gardens. Everyone with money that is. Designed in 1909 after England's garden villages, it is one of America's first planned communities. It was the collaborative creation of landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. and architect Grosvenor Atterbury. The community consists of over 800 homes, 11 apartment buildings, as well as churches, parks and storefronts in a lush fairy tale setting. Still a private community today, with strict ordinances, it appears very much as it did 100 years ago, and has retained its idyllic nature. With its multi-million dollar Tudor homes, curvy tree-lined streets, the West Side Tennis Club nearby, and fancy schmancy street names like Dartmouth, Groton, and Exeter, you'll truly think you died, and went to old money heaven. A typical Tudor mansion in Forest Hills Gardens, will cost you approximately $3 million. Number 4. Central Park South. This is the part of Manhattan sitting right below Central Park, between 5th and 8th Avenue, and from 57th to 59th Street. It may only span a mere three blocks, but you'll get a lot of bang within those three blocks. On the east end, you'll find Grand Army Plaza, together with the Glitzy Plaza Hotel, as well as quick access to the pond at Central Park. On the west is Columbus Circle with all of its shops, and the Museum of Art and Design. 
Along 59th Street, are the old-fashioned horse-drawn carriages, and rows of condominium buildings offering unobstructed views of all of Central Park from its highest floors. And you really don't have to go that far up, to get great views. Last is 57th Street, now known as Billionaire's Row, where you'll find a strip of luxury super slender skyscrapers, that are among the tallest and most expensive buildings in the world. Typical apartments on Billionaire's Row, will usually go for $4 million for a studio, to over $100 million for a penthouse apartment. Number 5. Toad Hill. We've now arrived at Staten Island, the land of many hills. And at 401 feet above sea level, Toad Hill is known as the highest point on the eastern seaboard. At the very top, you get multi-million dollar views overlooking all of Staten Island, New York Harbor, and much of New Jersey. If you thought you had to leave New York City, to find lush suburban nature, seclusion, peace and quiet, well, think again. Unlike any of the other wealthy communities we've seen so far, Toad Hill is one of those rare New York City neighborhoods that's strictly residential, with its own country club. It's not a gated community, nor is it even a private community. However, with absolutely no public transportation, a tiny shopping strip on the outskirts, and no sidewalks, it could only mean one thing. And that is, broke pedestrians are not welcomed. Also known for being a haven for mobster homes, Toad Hill is where you'll find the late crime boss, Paul Castellano's mega mansion. As well as the fictional Don's famous Tudor mansion, in The Godfather. There's plenty of room to spread out here. So you'll find a plethora of massive Vanderbilt-sized mansions mixed with smaller mansions, in a variety of styles from French farmhouse, to Tudor, to ultra-modern. And at a starting price of $1 million for a basic starter home, the folks at Toad Hill are not playing. Number 6. The Brooklyn Waterfront. Because this northwest part of Brooklyn has no official name, we'll just call it the Brooklyn Waterfront. It's not just one neighborhood, but a whole slew of them. With highfalutin earners and luxury housing prices, all adjacent to each other. These neighborhoods include Dumbo, Brooklyn Heights, Cobble Hill, Carroll Gardens, Borum Hill, and Park Slope. Basically, from the waterfront to Prospect Park. In these neighborhoods, you'll find all tree-lined residential areas with a good mix of luxurious lofts, brownstones, row houses, Victorian mansions, and pre-war apartment buildings. In addition, there are an endless supply of parks, trendy bars, breweries, restaurants, coffee shops, and independent boutiques for residents to enjoy. And those closer to the water, get direct access to Brooklyn Bridge Park. A series of piers offering sporting facilities and fun activities throughout the year. The area mainly appeals to young professionals, wealthy families, techies, and artists. A typical Brooklyn brownstone will cost you about $7 million, while you can expect a one-bedroom to rent for $4,000. Number 7. Lincoln Square. This west side Manhattan neighborhood is cradled between the Hudson River and Central Park, 72nd Street on the north, and 59th Street on the south. Formerly a dilapidated low-income neighborhood, it was revitalized with the construction of Lincoln Center. And shortly after that, it became a world-famous hub for the performing arts. Home to the New York Philharmonic, among many other cultural institutions, Lincoln Square has a combination of pre-war apartment buildings, brownstones, townhouses, and modern residential buildings, in addition to a myriad of educational institutions, shopping centers, and easy access to Central Park and Riverside Park. A typical brownstone in Lincoln Square can easily sell for $12 million, while a typical condo overlooking the river will sell for $4 million, and a one-bedroom apartment will rent for $5,300. Number 8. Malba. Technically off the East River, this pristine Queens neighborhood feels more like a tiny lakeside community. Situated between College Point and Whitestone, at the foot of the Whitestone Bridge, Malba gets its name from the first letters of the surnames of its five founders. Otherwise known as the richest neighborhood in Queens, it has a selection of normal-sized single-family homes, mansions, and a few townhouses in a wide range of architectural designs. The streets are lined with shady trees, landscaped gardens, and perfectly manicured lawns, giving off that peaceful and serene feel of a wealthy suburb. You can get a starter home for about a million, while the grand-scale mansions start at $5 million a pop. Number 9. Hudson Yards. Located on Manhattan's west side between Hell's Kitchen and Chelsea, Hudson Yards is one of New York's newest neighborhoods. And as with all new construction, you can expect it to be mad expensive. You can find this real estate development, on the waterfront of the Hudson River, between 10th and 11th avenues with a bunch of brand spanking new, ultra-modern structures, all clustered in one location. 
Among these brand new structures are three office towers, a shopping mall, a performing arts center called The Shed, a public plaza, a climbable sculpture called Vessel, and three residential skyscrapers facing the river. There's supposed to be more to come, but we can't say when that will be. Typical Hudson Yards condominium prices are at $2 million on the low end, and can climb as high as $25 million for a penthouse. And for those renters, they pay a premium of $22,000 a month for a two-bedroom apartment. Number 10. Riverdale. We've arrived at the Bronx. And here we are in Riverdale, another one of those places that look nothing like the rest of New York. Located along the beautiful Hudson River, at the northwest section of the Bronx, this most affluent neighborhood has one of the highest elevations in the city, and comes with scenic views of the river, the New Jersey Palisades, and the George Washington Bridge. You'll find the most money, in the upscale subsections of Hudson Hill and Riverdale Estates, both of which overlook the Hudson, as well as Fieldston to the east, a private community notable for its rocky terrain. Once a summer retreat for wealthy New Yorkers of the early 20th century, many of their stately brick and Tudor-style mansions still remain, and their most current residents have kept them in picture-perfect condition. In Riverdale, you'll find a quiet park-like setting, winding tree-lined streets, and old-world charm. A typical Tudor home in Riverdale will start around $3 million. And last we have for you number 11. Gramercy Park. Sometimes called just Gramercy, this quiet well-to-do residential area is named after the two-acre private park that it surrounds. It features brownstones, townhomes, and upscale apartment buildings on tree-lined streets, and feels more like a small village in the heart of the city than anything else. Located between 1st Avenue and Park, and 14th and 23rd Streets, it is the only neighborhood in Manhattan with its own private park. The park is gated and closed off to the public. This means, if you don't live around its perimeter, you don't get a key. It's been that way since the park's inception in 1844, and they have no plans on changing it. In addition to the park, within the boundaries of this tiny neighborhood are the National Arts Club, historic bars, and a wide selection of fabulous restaurants. A brownstone in Gramercy Park will cost you around $12 million, while a basic one-bedroom rental will go for $4,500 a month. And that's it for the 11 richest neighborhoods in New York City. So which of these locations did you like the most? Have you lived in any one of them and have direct experience? So perhaps we left out a few. Well, we couldn't possibly include everything. However, we're always happy to hear from you. Do tell us about some other neighborhoods you feel could have made this list. Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon, so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see each other next time.